Hello, thank you for joining. Give me a second again. Hi, everyone. Happy, what? Is it Saturday or Sunday? Sa Saturday. Oops, I almost said Sunday. Because I'm used to being live on Sundays. Awesome. If you join, kindly share, please. Um, hope we're all doing great today. Happy Saturday. And today, again, if you saw the flyer on the page, I'll be talking to Prince P today. You guys know what I do, right? So, so babes love to do this. So I go out there. I look for the people that are willing to come to the show and talk about themselves, talk about what they are doing. And I bring them up here to talk to us. And so that's what we are doing today. So again, thanks to all of you who have joined. And please, if you join, do not hesitate to share the video. Right? And um, let me quickly do another share. Um, give me a second. Where is that video? Where are you? Okay, you can be anything podcast. Life with a Prince P. Music. There we go. Awesome. So thank you all for joining. Again, your girls, so so babes, you know what we do. We talk to the people in our community who are willing to come share their stories. And again, why do we do all of this? The whole idea is by listening to other people, what they're doing, how they are going about their days. The idea is that you'll be inspired and all of this is an, is an effort to build our community, right? It is an effort for us to be able to do better in our community. So thank you to all of you who follow the page and for those of you who are always here with me. I do appreciate it a lot. So as I said earlier on, today we'll be talking with Prince P. Prince P is a Cameroonian musician. And I want him, I don't know a lot about him. When I learned about him, I saw a couple of his clips. I was like, oh, this is nice. This is someone that, again, is in a community. And I could say for sure that I do not know much about him until I was talking to someone and they mentioned him and I listened to his clips and I was blown away. So I reached out and I was like, hey, do you mind talking to me? And he said, yes, you all know how impressed, how happy I am when these guests say yes to me. I know that it is the time, it is their effort, it is, it is your own way to build a community. So Prince P, thank you again for saying yes to So So Bips. I appreciate you for coming up on my platform and hey. Thank you. Come to the you can be anything podcast. Thank you. You you guys probably have me. Uh, you see me. I'm wearing <laughs> for halfways because uh, I've got a little thing I'm doing here. I'm getting a tatted up. So, um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome, Prince. Please get in his tattoo. That's why you see his sweater is one way. And again, yep. in spite of that, he still decided to talk to me. And I'm like, are you sure? I I think I've heard that that thing hurts. And if you're hurting and you're talking to me at the same time, then this yeah. is good. It is really painful. It is painful. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you get used to it. So Awesome. Okay. After all, that's why you're a Cameroonian. And we're used to pain. Please. Okay. That was a little bit Prince P. Yes, I know you as Prince P, Prince P music. Um, for those of my listeners who are watching, um, give us a brief introduction of yourself. Who would you say Prince P is? Yeah, okay. So uh, Prince P is a multi-award-winning artist, uh, recently uh, crowned by uh, AfriFamil of California as uh, the best diaspora artist of the year um, in Los Angeles, California, which is a prestigious award, uh, basically, entity that specializes in um, actually... Um, how can I say this? Uh, kind of being grateful to the people who are who are um, contributing to the community, not only in Cameroon but all over the world. Um, I got to meet people, very influential people, 
um, including commissioners and so on and so forth that was that were there. Uh, but yeah, Prince B is a multi-award winning artist from Cameroon. Um, I've been doing music for multiple years. You know, I'd like to think of myself of along the lines of uh, the locals, the Stanley Annals and all that. Uh, did a couple of shows with them before. Um, got quite a decent background. Um, and um, if some of you are here that were in the DMV area a couple of years back, we did uh, a show that was that contained that had me, Mr. Leo, Daphne, uh, basically most of those big, big artists that you can name, uh, including Magasco and Mix. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I uh, do a bit of Afrobeat, a bit of a bit of Afro Khmer, like they say, mm -hmm. uh, using the Franc Anglais, using the 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 Pigeon, using basically everything. So yeah. Wow, that's that's good. Thank you for that intro. And again, congratulations on your award. I did see your Afrifamu, which is the African Fashion and Music Award. I saw that yes. you won that award, twenty twenty four. Congratulations to you. And Thank you. Yeah, so you talked of music. You've been doing music for a long time. The names you called again, those are, again, anybody that is Cameroonian and stuff. So when you do music, did you do music just out of Cameroon or you started music in Cameroon before coming to the States? So growing up, you know, um, I was put in a choir. So I was put in a choir. Basically, I grew up in a church choir. And um, at a certain age, I stopped when I came to America. Uh, been to, been in the U.S. since 2003. So I, when I came here, so I did my secondary school, college, uh, university, and all that over here. Um, I was put through uh, choir, you know. I learned there. I stopped doing the music. Then all of a sudden, it came back to me. When I was in my early years of high school, I went ahead and you know I um, I joined the show choir. I joined all type of choirs that I could. Traveled traveled left and right, um, winning awards at the show choir for the team, for us, basically, mm -hmm. as one of the best show choirs in the state of Indiana. I went to high school in Indiana. And um, and then afterwards, started university, didn't really care about music. Then all of a sudden, these four guys traveled from Nigeria, exchanged students, and we just bonded. Uh, we were called the acapella boys. And we did acapellas. We were uh, known in our university in the city, and people loved us a lot. Uh, we had shows, doing stuff for the Martin Luther King um, days and things like that. We were on the news. It basically everything. It was it was nice. It was nice. But after the university, took some time off, did a little bit of time in in Paris, and came back. 2016. That's when I was like, okay, I ended up meeting my then manager who introduced me, who was like, yo, you, you've got some talent. I've seen you do some acapellas. And I, I, I was like, okay, what are we doing? Then I hit it up there, started doing music professionally since then. Awesome. And again, the reason I ask you this question is because just like you, I'm also a Cameroonian child, a child from Cameroon, mm -hmm. a girl from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And I know what it is like with our parents and Oh, you're doing music. Oh, you're going yep. to school. All oh, this, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. you, yes, you've come to the US. You did your bachelor's and you went to school. How did your family take it when you told your parents that you know what? Um, I'm Prince P now. I'm going to do music. <laughs> How did they take it? How was the reaction from home? Well, they wanted to see that I'm done with school first. You know how the parents, the Cameroon parents are <laughs> school first over everything. So they pushed and pushed and pushed for school first, mm -hmm. which I did, you know, but, you know, I have a separate career besides besides music. So, yeah. So now when I graduated, got my degree, you know, I wasn't really showing out, you know, in terms of like people knowing me that much. Even my family didn't know that I had the talent. Mm -hmm. you know because i wasn't i wasn't showing a lot to them then all of a sudden when i released my first my first video titled nyango in 2017 mm -hmm. that's when they saw the video and they heard the lyrics they heard the vocals they were they were flabbergasted and and then my mother was like wow is that you, you? you is that you i'm <laughs> like yeah then 
Then he came to when I sent her a second voice note or second song through um, through uh, regular messages. She listened to it and she said, oh, that's a nice artist. Where's this artist from? <laughs> and I was like, he's from Cameroon. And then she was like, oh, okay, what's his name? I said, Prince P. And she was like, hmm, okay. Prince P, hmm, okay. Who is Prince P? And I said, Prince P is me. And she was, she just busted out laughing. Yeah. And, I, and then she was like, wow, I see, I see it. So they've just always encouraged me, including my father who still lives in Cameroon. So they've just okay. always encouraged me and, and try to be there the, the, the best they can. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful story. Whenever, again, I always ask this question to people that are from Cameroon and are going towards what we call the unconventional professions, right? Mm -hmm. In Cameroon, we know what those professions are. Those are professions that give people millions of dollars, professions that make people millionaires in the Western mm -hmm. world. But in Cameroon, yep. they are considered unconventional. That's unconventional, why I always yeah. ask this question. And mm -hmm. you said something that I want to pick it back a little bit on is the whole fact that you have a career on the side of your music. One mm -hmm. of the things that we've seen our Cameroonian artists struggle with is the fact that, man, this, I don't want to call them broke, but some of them are really struggling financially. Mm -hmm. Yep. They themselves have spoken about it. Some of them you can see, some of them have to go through the route of faking it till you make it, which mm -hmm. I personally do not have a problem with faking it till you make it. Some yep. of them just have to put that facade out there of this is who they are because they want to earn the respect from Cameroonians because I know how tough it is for Cameroonians to support Right, you have to convince Absolutely. these people. They are not the easiest kind of people to sway to just say, "Hey, this is one of ours. We are going with there with that person." Right? Absolutely. So for you to be followed and supported by Cameroonians, man, you must represent. You must deliver. That's what mm -hmm. I'm sure. Right. So I want to talk, talk. I want us to talk a little bit about your your decision to have a career to build a career even while um, also building your music career. I don't know what, again, it's your choice if you want to talk about what you do apart sure. from music, that's fine. Yeah. Um, what, what, was your, what was your line of thought around there when you decided so my, to have another Yeah, that's start? a great question. So my, my line of thought from the get-go was, um, I've always been that one guy who, um, like they say i wanted to be responsible from the get-go i didn't want to be left and right and so on and so forth so i had a plan in place while i was still in in college uh I, of course i was doing music but i thought that okay i was looking at the market and i was saying that okay i see that you really have to be top notch you have to be in cameroon mostly for you to be able to be recognized or, or looked at um but then i thought to myself okay I have to have a career to be able to to actually um, fund my music, support myself before others will support me. You know, you mentioned earlier that it's really difficult for Cameroon artists who are here to be able to get the support that they need. Yes, it is. It's definitely difficult. At some point, we felt like it was a fight between us here in the diaspora versus the ones back home, and we we saw that we have equal. Um, not equal opportunity, but we have equal talent. If not, no offense to them, even better, because I've seen a lot of artists here that are absolutely phenomenal from Cameroon that are not even looked at, but but uh, the ones back home are supported. You know, sometimes I give this example, Davido, for example, yes, we can say, yes, his father had money and everything. Davido was born in Atlanta and he started music in Atlanta. Like they say, support your own, you know. He started music in Atlanta brought it back home once he brought it back home everybody started supporting him look at him now today so we start by we, we grow by supporting our own i'm going to look at for example libyanka i'm taking an example on her no one really knew who she was no one was paying attention to her so she had to literally go but british got talent or this talent for her to get known and she had just one song the americans kind of supported her more than we did and now i feel like honestly it was hypocritical of us that since we knew that all of a sudden she's supported by others we started thinking like oh she's from cameroon let's support her too she's and that's and that's the problem 
uh, we have to start with the with the artists from the get go, so that we can raise them up and be able to value them at at a particular uh, standard. Because believe it or not, it is it takes days to work on a song. It takes a lot of money to work on a song. It takes a lot of money to work on a video. So when we deliver pieces like this, for example, that five minutes, two, three, four minutes that you know the audience is watching. Um, even if you feel like it's not up to par, it's still best to encourage and support, but be critical in a constructive manner, because, yeah. you know, we've got some people, you know, that sometimes when they show somebody show their stuff, they're like, oh, yeah, this one is a waste of time. This one is a waste of this. Then you basically shut down the potential and the talent that the person has. You know, I've seen artists who are not even close to most of the artists in Cameroon. I've seen some in Nigeria, some in Ghana, some in other countries who are not close to the potential. I'll give an example. You have this guy that I just watched on TikTok, Hens. His name is Hens. You hear the vocals on that guy, and then you try to compare it to some of the other artists. You'll be you'll be like, whoa, you know. But why is he not known? Because we're not supporting our own. So that's kind of uh, you know what it is. Yeah, it, it is it is challenging. I know um I've listened to a couple of artists talk about the whole diaspora. Again, this was a diaspora artist, I think she's somewhere she was somewhere in Maryland in the DMV mm -hmm. area, let me put it that way. And I know that there is this general belief that for those of you Cameroonian artists that are in the diaspora, it's hard for you to blow mm -hmm. unless you go back home. Right. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. general thought is that um, for Cameroonian, the Cameroonian artists, just give the example of the video who was still able to start music in the U.S. and went to Nigeria, went back home, and he's still one of the best that Nigeria has or ever has. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And so for you as a Cameroonian who finds you, you find yourself here in the U.S., do you feel that urge? Do you feel that need to go back home to maybe to play back home or to see, to do your music videos back home for you to be able to become better known or for you to blow, as we say it? Do you feel that urge to say, okay, no, for you to succeed or for you to make it, you have to go back to Cameroon? Honestly, you don't particularly have to go back to a certain area for you to be able to blow. You just need the right support. Um, the reason I give an example about Davido, because most of us here in the diaspora have actually traveled back home mm -hmm. and we've done all of that and people still pay more attention to those who are based there. Mm -hmm. We understand that, you know, people would say, oh, people have this, they have this view of if you live in America or you live in Canada or you live in Europe, you have a lot of money. So nobody needs to support you. Mm -hmm. They have that view. And that's a, that's a, that's a problem because they forget that the artists back home, the only job that they have is to do their music so they can make money. Us here, we have a regular careers, eight hours a day, or some people work 12 hours a day, and then we still have to deliver music, you know, work on the music and so on and so forth. And to think about it, back home, people have sponsors, they have record labels. Here, we do it on our own, most of us. I know artists who have gone back home who say, I'm making money, I'm going to go back home. They stay there for a year, for six months, and still have not gotten gotten to where they need to get and it's not because they don't have the talent it's just that like you said we're difficult people uh in cameroon where it's difficult for us to support and that and that's the issue um but yeah sometimes you do have to make a trip here and there some of us have videos that we've shot back home and we've brought it back here get it mastered and everything ex extremely good quality and so on and so forth, and people still don't really pay attention. So that's just like the same French said, dommage. So dommage, it's unfortunate, right? Yeah. It's, it is really unfortunate. But again, the one thing that we are not doing is settling because the truth is Cameroon, I say this, our country is, is one country that is close to my heart. And I keep saying that we can do better. 
as a community and as a country. That's why we have platforms like this, right? That's Absolutely. why you will find people like this. There are a ton of platforms that you we go to to talk about the different things that we are doing just to create that awareness. Before mm -hmm. starting the show, I did make it known to you that I really did not know you. I probably, the previous song, <laughs> I've heard it, but I never knew who Prince P is. Right? Yeah. And I probably have heard that song because of your friend LG. Mm -hmm. right. So you see that there is that, there is that, I don't know if I can call it a dichotomy, but there is, it is a little bit, um, sometimes when new songs even come out, you we don't get them. Again, fortunately, I am more in the social media space now. So I will see some of those songs I will see as people share and stuff, right? That's one thing about us. We, 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 I don't think, um, maybe this is too much to say, but we support right but i don't know if mm -hmm. we're doing it the right way Absolutely. i don't know if it is the challenge of sharing because how do we know how will i know that nigeria has a new song or some musician in nigeria or in ghana has a new song it's probably somebody that i know that knows some other person that shared the video or mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not on TikTok, or maybe I'm on Instagram. I love to do Instagram videos. Then I do one of those reels and I go to add music and I see that somebody has done a video. That, that mm -hmm. to me, that's how I learn about new songs, right? Okay. Or for example, mm -hmm. like um, our Asabara had a new song not too long ago, Bygone. You know where I heard that song? On Instagram. I was making my video on Instagram and I saw somebody, I was like, whoops, I have to make my own video of this song. So mm -hmm. one thing is, um, I always encourage, I see that some of your colleagues now are doing it, to have those little those little clips or what you call, whatever you call them, challenges across the different platforms so people get to, for me, that's what works, that's how I know because I rarely go to a club, I'm not here in a club or somewhere, which of initially, course. that's the expectation that you'll hear those songs in a club, right? In a club, yeah, of course. Most of us who don't go to the club, we blast our homes with YouTube, that is still supporting because the many times that I play your song on YouTube, it gives also puts it out there. Or if I dance to it and I post it, another person will be like, oh God, what is Soso Babes doing? Soso Babes is dancing this song again now. No. <laughs> you see, just yeah. things like that, right? So yeah, but it's it is it is great. I love that you talked about that whole diaspora and Cameroon concept. But before we even talk more. I want you to tell me a little bit a, a little bit about the African Fashion and Music Award. How did you okay. get there? Like, you can well, just give us the gist around okay. that whole award. Yeah. So the African Music Fashion Award, um, it is some. It is actually an entity that was. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, started almost eight years ago. Hmm. Um, I was nominated at that time. I had a manager who knew the owner. And this was the time that the lady was actually, she was still doing shows like in small hotel spaces and things like that. Uh, I performed there once, the first time in California. Mm -hmm. And then it grew. Uh, it was a vision that that lady believed in. She had a lot of people in the community in California, Cameroonian, Nigerian, everybody supporting. And once they supported, this year when I went, I was. I was really, I was like, wow, from that small thing to this. And now she's able to host awards at twenty dollars to $30,000 halls wow. in Los Angeles, California, next to Hollywood. And if you think of that. So now she, she knew me from the get-go. I was the first one who was there to, to support her. And... Um, I've, I've, I was also nominated in 2017, but I didn't have the chance to go due to some circumstances. But this time, you know, there were nominations going on. She reached out and she was like, OK, we see your work. We love your work. You've been doing a great job for these 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 years. Um, submit your, you know, your candidacy. Let's see where it goes. Get some votes, so on and so forth. And it was that. Amazing. That that's yes. great. So I did see you. You did the um, if you're happy and you know you clap your hands. I saw you yeah. singing. <laughs> yeah. 
in there. And that yeah. I watched, the whole alone was amazing. I watched those short video and I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Like if you, this is one of ours receiving such a beautiful award in this kind of, a man, we've seen award, award day and award day, right? Yes, in yes. In different places where award, man, Everybody can make their award and give, but when you watch some awards, you know that, hey, this is an award. Right? This is an award, yes, yes. absolutely. So, and when I watched it, I was like, wow, this is really beautiful. And That song, actually, you know, my daughter, you know, my daughter, when I sing that, that's like her favorite. So oh, if she's yeah. able to stand up and clap, what well, makes me think that adults cannot stand up and clap? Oh, oh, this so I, I use that and, you know, they were like, you know, they, 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 they cooperated through, yeah, it through was, that. Yeah, the response was good because when you yeah. say if you have then you know, tell people that actually responded, which is what yeah. you expect from an audience, right? When exactly, you, when exactly. Performing. That was that was beautiful. So before we go ahead, I want us to listen to one of Prince P's songs. In this song, this is Pupua, um, featuring Eddie B. So um, let me sh play that. Really cool Let's take a pause there. And now, tell us a little bit, that song, right? Your choice yeah. of that song. By the way, what happened to your hair? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you have a second career, you know you can't have that stuff. <laughs> you have that one career where you can put up a persona and then you have another one where you cannot. So. Um, I had to kind of step off and be more professional. But uh, about the song, so watching the video, I don't know if people were able to read between the lines. So this song has, um, it is about betrayal. So it is about one lady playing two to three men at the same time. So I meet this girl and I'm talking to my friend about her. And then he tells me that he meet this girl as well. And he's talking to me about her. We're both excited. <laughs> so we end up at a bar drinking. We're talking about it and whatnot. And then um, all of a sudden, towards the end, of course, we probably didn't watch the end. Towards the end, she's telling me that, oh, I'm really good. She's saying all the good stuff to me and my belly, my belly don't sweet, you know, I'm just like butterflies, you know. And then, and then she's doing the same thing to my friend. Now, um, we end up somewhere together. Him and I were going, he invited me out, just like I invited him out. I'm like, okay, you know, I want you to meet this girl. He's like, yeah, I want you to meet this girl too. 
So we end up at the same place. So it seems like the girl made a mistake and invited us both at the same place. So we get there. Once we get there, we're getting out of the car. When we get out of the car, we see her running to another man. And we're oh, like, whoa. Not even to you isn't people. That, <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, isn't that that isn't that the girl that that's that's my girl? And then he's like, no, that's my girl. And we're like, that's the girl that we uh I was just talking to. And then and then we're just like, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, that's how it goes. So we just let her, let her go along with the third guy. And then, you know, yeah. That's interesting. That's a nice one. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration when you write songs. What inspires you? Uh, well, a lot of the things have to do with things that happen in life naturally. And so most of my songs have to do with that. Um, I have one titled Nyango, which was the first song I ever released. Nyango was a girl that was giving me a lot of trouble. And I'm not sleeping. I'm thinking about Nyango every time. Nyango, Nyango, Nyango. I'm not even eating because of Nyango. So uh, basically, it's kind of like real life stories, things that can happen to men at times, and things that us men, we can do that can drive us nuts. Um, basically, real life story, basically, that, that's that's what I write my lyrics off, based off of. And um, I know it's happened to some of us over here, but we have that one lady that we're thinking of, you know, especially our wives. So that's-, Likewise, that's, that's right? <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. That's, that's amazing. When you talk about your inspiration to write music and why you write, I'm looking forward to one that you will be inspired by your daughter. To, to absolutely write, right yes okay. absolutely because just by talking to you the first five minutes you definitely you mentioned her my daughter my daughter like twice so definitely there's probably something cooking which she's gonna be the inspiration behind yeah she's that. got it's daddy wrapped over 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 the finger she's got <laughs> daddy wrapped over the finger it's what the girls do to their daddies yeah That's yeah it's the daddies <clears throat> yeah you do music again um with you have your job you have the, and you have music on the side of course sometimes you already mentioned earlier on that um one of the challenges that you think that again i don't know if you said that or i said it is the fact that most of our artists or some of our artists that are back home they are mostly just doing music sometimes mm -hmm. and i have made a video again with my podcast you can be anything i encourage people to be to find their better versions their best versions right mm -hmm. and i know there is one of the short video in one of the short videos i made i did make mention that sometimes in life you can do you can have your passion you do what you what you love to do for example podcasting talking to people like you i love it but this does absolutely not yeah this does absolutely not i have to do something i have to work or maybe or have a business on the side to take care of things like this and that was the encouragement that i had in that video to encourage encouraging um there, there there could come a time where you again you prince b you will not even need to work anymore but it, this thing is a process right absolutely, your work yeah. will be your music your 100 yes. commitment you get yes. it but again, before we ever get there, I cannot wait for the time in my life that I'll just wake up, have a studio, just go sit in that studio, talk to people Monday through Friday. <laughs> that is my dream life. Get yeah. It? So we yeah. all work towards these things. We are working while we're doing that. We are also having a gig, something. We got to pay bills wherever we are. In the mm -hmm. world. So let's talk a little bit about your challenges. So in this whole Again, today our focus is on your music career, Prince P music, right? What do mm -hmm. you say are some of the challenges that you have faced so far or you're battling with in this career? Well, some of them have to do with contracts. Um, you know, event organizers try everything that they can, but contracts, um, li uh, basically being up to the expectation of the contract. If you're telling me that, hey, I'm going to do this for you. You got to be able to do it because at the end of the day, I'm spending my own uh, hard earned money to be able to also entertain people. If I'm bringing an audience to you, for example, and um, you're having those people, even if it's just two people and you're selling the tickets for hundred dollars, you just made a hundred, you just made $200 from me, from my presence. And, and, and we got to be able to um, actually uh, support that, actually appreciate that. But some of the challenges that I face is that I'm having to use my own money um, in terms of doing that. It's music is not 
some some for some people it's a passion for some people it's spiritual um and it's something that i personally cannot let go because i come from a family of musicians but they didn't really want to go ahead and blow like we have a family you know, our parents who always say that you either a doctor or a lawyer or something nothing else you have to go to school so i saw that different with my parents where they were like they encouraged me you know and now one of the things i want to profit in there before i continue is to let parents know us parents right now know that when you see a talent in your child try to help develop that talent from to that child instead of denying it school is good school can be what you call um if a, if a kid is really good at football for example they can they can live they can make their living off of it but at the same time you have to also encourage them that you also you always have to have plan b and plan b is what your degree yeah. if you go and get injured plan b can take care of you for the rest of your life no problem so encourage that talent help help uh, encourage the kids to do better to become better to become uh, everything that they want in life but now so those are like i said those are some of the challenges that i face i face uh the bookings of shows technically having to go and look for shows on your own or sometimes when you share here you see somebody they share the flyer of somebody you reach out here's my stuff and they're impressed they're like i don't know you but wow this is pretty good so what are you what are you looking for oh i want to be able to at least open or at least come up to the show give me an opportunity so i can share my talent so that next time when you're going to need you can see what i can do then you can say okay here's a quote for you you know um those those little little things like i say some of us invest in us in ourselves 100 percent of the time but um it's just the return that's not there but we can't say it's a waste of money because we have people who have done that for years and then all of a sudden boom do you know they make it um and 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 and, and you know, I don't know. I've got a lot of other things to think, but it's just they're not here at the mind at the moment. Yeah. But um, but yeah, those are some of the things we face. Yeah, which again is it's common challenges among again, um considering that you're in the diaspora booking shows and stuff like that. I think that, that is um like expected. When you you sing in the diaspora, do you do record labels like I've heard our artists in Cameroon do too? So do you are you okay for your example are you signed by a record label or are you an independent musician right now right now i'm an independent artist um i'd like to be signed but uh, when the right person comes the right time <laughs> comes of course we we all know what happens in record labels yes. uh but right now i'm independent i do my stuff on my own um anything that you see out there it's me uh on my own um but i also wanted to to, to line something that um well it just flew off my mind but anyway it's gonna come back so yeah i'm not signed i'm independent everything by myself studio by myself all that okay you made a you made reference to something early on that i want to talk a little bit on is this whole encouraging our kids right um growing up we all know that <laughs> you yeah we there was soccer right the football as we call it back home yeah there was football there's basketball there is all of these things track i used to do gymnastics when i was um in secondary school and stuff or do mm -hmm. like the back match on 11 february and 20 and may all those fun stuff and mm -hmm. but again when it comes to this what we call extracurricular activities as we grew up calling them in schools Right. We all know that it was tough for our parents to to be like, hey, yeah, this person is great in, or they'll say, hey, uh, Prince P is great in music. We are going to encourage here uh, his music career, or hey, Valley is great. He's a great football player. We are going to push him to play football. Right. That's something that our parents struggle with. Today we are talking about it, and um, when I just want to ask you this question as a parent too. Right now, we, you and I are talking about it like something that our parents did not do or did not encourage us to do. So now, Absolutely. time has passed. We are parents now. Do you find yourself in a place where you can encourage a kid, your child? Let's say, for example, let's take football because I know that if there is something that Cameroonians are blessed with is football. Yes. Well, 
football yeah. in Cameroon is just the management kiwi. There is great football talent in Cameroon. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself in a place where you can encourage your kid to play football, to become a football player in a country like America? Where yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. I find my child. You know, I've got a I've got a six year old who's passionate. The guy's very active. I'm talking handstand gymnastics, American football, basketball, uh, African football. You know, um, it was in there in the DNA for him. Uh, he was six six months old. I was sitting on the on the couch every morning at six a.m. to watch Chelsea play with him, mm -hmm. and he enjoyed it. So so you know, I would encourage him for sure. But parents also, what we have to do is have the right balance. Uh, we can encourage them to be able to play to play soccer or to play any to do anything they want to do. But at the same time, we want them to know that without this, you can't do this. So meaning that if he or she is not doing well in school, we take some of the stuff that they like to do away. Like, for example, when a, when a child is passionate or good at something, they love it. Yeah. So sometimes we have to kind of say, hey, if you want to do this, you have to do do better in school. So we have to have the right balance. And that is what pushes us to be able to um, make sure that their future is secured. Because some parents have children who go pro. Some parents have children who uh, actually get the university paid through athleticism. Mm -hmm. um, so but in terms of in terms of here, having my child play here because he likes he likes football a lot. Uh, I would think a little bit twice because me, I think of level. If I want my child to really succeed and learn, I don't, I'm not just going to throw them in, you know, the level here is a bit lower compared to the levels in Europe yeah. and so on and so forth. So, but quick question on that. Does that not instead, does that not make it less competitive for him? So look at it like here, because sometimes you'll see again, this is me now putting another conversation on you, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that you see most from or most of like we're using Cameroon here as our case study. You will see their kids are playing American football, they're playing all of these other things. But the soccer that probably is in their veins, they are running away from that. You don't you mm -hmm. think that because the market is not too big, they are gonna stand a better chance playing soccer in America? Than yeah, it's a, it's a great question. But what I would advise parents is if you see that a child is good, really good at something than the other, invest in them. Send them. Okay, if you see that he's good at, at soccer, for example, we've got a lot of American soccer players playing in, 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 in Europe right now. Mm -hmm. Their parents took them while they were younger and brought them to Europe to, to, to learn from the Europeans, to learn the style of play from there. Now they're playing in national teams. I'm going to take an example, Kristen Pulisic. Kristen Pulisic was born in, in, in Hershey, Pennsylvania. You know, small town Pennsylvania. And now his parents took him out of there while he was really young. You've got other players in the U.S. that are playing here. But, you know, if you notice that, we all know that if they bring like an African team here to play against an MLS team here, it's going to be a different story. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the levels are different. Yeah. Some people might not agree with me because Africa doesn't have the stadiums and most of the infrastructures, but we do, but not much as, as here. Mm -hmm. But imagine if we had what they have here, there, yeah. what we would be able to do. Yeah. So basically investing in your child, taking he or she away from the area that you think is not going to be beneficial to them. And another thing I'd like to say is encourage your children to learn different languages. Mm -hmm. Ah, it is it is very it is very good for them it is because if your child can speak spanish french english german chinese they will they will excel in life and i always say this anything that's not challenging would would not make you advance you have to be in an area that is challenging for you to be able to unleash your full potential yeah. for you to be able to work harder to be at that level or even to reach beyond that level. Yeah. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes when I see people stay in an area where they say, I'm comfortable here, you're comfortable there, which means that you will stay at a mediocre pace. Yeah. 
while others are advancing because they're changing sceneries. So the, the, yeah, those 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 different key points. Wow, that's that's a good one. I just told you that my happy spot is when I don't have to work anymore and I just have to do my shows <laughs> and talk to people like you just wake up every day, Monday to Friday or even Saturday, just get into mm -hmm. my studio and talk to people. That's my dream. God bless my heart. <laughs> So, and, and, and I mean, with your platform, you, you're definitely going to make that because I'll tell you, your, your platform with the type of, you know, uh, I'm going to say, quote unquote, second career you're doing, it is challenging. It's not every talk show that you just get on and then you get all the views, you get all the audience you need and so on and so forth. But we also have to put in our mind that we start from somewhere yep. to get somewhere. And yep. we also elevate by supporting others. And that's how that's how that's what I think we should do. Amazing. This is beautiful. Thank you so much. Again, you just made me believe that my dream will someday come true. Right. <laughs> this is great. So hey guys, if you just joined or is I'm talking to I should have put didn't even put your name on the screen on mine. I'm talking to Prince P. Um, Prince P is a Cameroonian musician, and we just listened to one of his clips, um, Putwa, um, featuring Eddie B beautiful song so i'm gonna pull that up for a little bit again just so we i want to i want to see the the, the ending part of that song you did mention that was the song. ending part okay <laughs> so the storyline is very interesting Oh, really? I'll just just that I cannot hear the song. How come? Oh, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, maybe I need to change the certain setting. Oh, yeah, I think I couldn't hear. I thought, I thought it was something that it would just be playing and they can hear it on their end. That's what I thought. Yeah, but I, I think. But he says, uh, for some reason, can't hear the sound. This means that the audio of the song is not going through with the part. That's okay. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm not sure why that happened, LG. Sorry. I was here enjoying and vibing to it all by myself, not knowing that my audience cannot even hear cannot even hear <laughs> I don't you know sometimes vibing. sometimes that's good sometimes that's good promotion that it's going to send them to do to, to <laughs> it's going to send them to go look it up <laughs> yes go to youtube look what we yeah. see. oh i'm sorry i did not mean that for real <laughs> i did not mean that that was not on purpose for real it wasn't so hey check out the song on youtube it's a it's a beautiful one and please subscribe to Prince P Music as well. And for that reason, I'm going to put it again. Maybe, yes, I'm dropping the link right now. You can read my mind. <laughs> I just added a link to the comment section. Oh, I hope, yeah. You can read my mind. That's a song I was playing. So please check out Prince P. If you get on YouTube, do subscribe to his channel. This is what we do. We come out here to talk to our own, the people that are making our community what it is, doing their best, putting in their best effort to make sure that Cameroon is known in a good way. And that's why I enjoy every little second I spend with one of these community builders. It is fun to me. I don't care what time of the day or how I feel. So long as I have someone that says, yes, Solange, I want to talk to you. I am on here talking to them. It gives me great joy. It makes me really happy. So, Prince, thank you so much for accepting 
to come You're to our platform. Welcome. We are getting Thank to you. one. We are getting to one hour. Is there anything you wanted us to talk about a little bit before? Well, at this moment, not a lot, um, but I wanted to say thank you so much for having me. So one of the ways I was able to find out, like you said earlier, you said we learn from someone to someone to someone. It's like a, it's like a pyramid. So uh, one of my guys, you know, that I know, uh, LG actually shared your, 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 your platform. And I was watching and I was like, wow, this is very interesting. And he posted a comment on there and I went in and liked it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. Since then I started following. Um, but now I had to switch up to my artist page and follow as well. That way I can get the notifications anytime you're on there so I can watch anytime that I can. Um, but this this is this is um what I'd like to say again is thank you so much for having me. And of course, it's not within the the exact the exact setting that I was hoping for, but you know, I needed to make sure, you know, sometimes things things are done well when they're natural than yep. than to be done you know in a quote unquote fake fake environment so but yeah <laughs> this has been good and again guys this young man is taking his he's doing his tattoo he's in a tattoo shop doing or reviving again i'm trying i'm trying not to cry oh. <laughs> i'm trying not to cry because this thing is painful <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying not to cry so when you see me smiling too much like this, it's, it's, it's a little it's a, a little hard for me. <laughs> I have to be a big boy. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I really do appreciate that you decided to, you still did this, even though you were not home. But you said, hey, Solange, I can still do it. I'm in here, but we can still do it. And it's a freestyle for me. I love for us to come and just have a free conversation, just talk about the different things that are happening and how again, what our contribution can be, right? Absolutely. At this point, this is where I throw that question out to you. You are on the social media space. You do see what is happening in our community. And one of the things, again, when you look at it, maybe you want to look at it both in the aspect of this is Cameroon. You have traveled, you're well-traveled. You have an idea of what all the other different communities are like. So if exactly. you had an opportunity, right, to talk to mm -hmm our people like this is me now making you the motivational speaker of cameroon i've given you this big mic that everybody pauses everybody stops to listen okay. to prince p talk what are you going to tell them so what i would say is support your own my people um that's one of the things i would say support your own first like they say charity starts from home uh, you start uh, and they say like they say in french avant de balayer la cour de ton voisin so meaning that support our own first before we support anybody else doesn't mean that we don't have to support anyone else. And another thing is like um, together like that, we can grow to do to do great things, to be bigger, better. The Cameroon that I know that I grew up with, when you hear of Samuel Eto, people were like, whoa, everybody know who he is. We want, we want that. We want more of that. When you hear of Richard Bona, people are like, we know who he is. He's, he's known here in America, he's known everywhere. But yeah. now we need to be able to be at that level where uh, when you hear of Manu Dibango, everybody knows him. So we need to be able to be back at that level where we can support our own to put to push our art, our mm -hmm. talent out there to everybody else so that they can know that, hey, Cameroon is, 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 is greater than we really thought. You know, the new generation have come in. Some of them don't know who the Manu Dibangos are. Some of them don't know who the Richard Bonas are and so on and so forth. So we need to remind them that we have greats and we had greats. Yeah. Um, and, and together we can make it um, and by supporting each other. It doesn't matter whether it's in music, whether it's in film, whether it's in, it's in people have businesses around your town, support the, the best you can. Even if you have $1 and you want to buy Chin Chin for $1, use that $1 to go buy that Chin Chin from your own brother first. You support your brother, then you know that you one day you also need the support from your brother and they will do that for you. Um, that's, that's kind of what I would like to say. And I wanted to say thank you so much again for having me. And I hope to be back on the show really soon. But in a in a really cool and better uh, environment. Um, you're great the way you of, are. 
The yes, natural is you. amazing. Don't make it seem yes. like it's your current setting is any there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing the, wrong the, with the it. Environment the environment is nice, just the outfit now. and all that, you know. So <laughs> that's that that's why. But thank you so much for having me. And um, I really look forward again. Yeah, thank you so much for saying yes. In the Saturday afternoon, the weather just got better. And we yes. decided to say, hey, I'm going to talk to you, Solange. I'm out here doing my younger boy stuff, but I'm going <laughs> to talk to you. And you decided yes. to join. I do appreciate you so much, Prince P. So, hey, if you're listening again, this is Prince P. He's a Cameroonian artist. Please check him out on YouTube. He also has a page on Facebook, Prince P Music. Um, I think I tagged it on this video. If I hope the tag worked. If not, I can fix it. Again, please follow his page, like his music. And when for all those, my listeners, all of you, again, I talked to a couple of people who are in these music places. When you're doing all the events and stuff, remember that there is, we should, the one way that we can support this, our diaspora, artists to grow is to organize those events invite them to those events and make their music known because as i said earlier on the way i know asaba is through instagram reels right mm -hmm. that's because i don't attend shows a lot but one way that we can make these people and again look at i would know asaba ways in cameroon before prince peter is even next to me right so the best way that we can according to me is by when we do these shows, let's bring in our artists in the diaspora, because most of these shows sometimes are even organized by people in the diaspora, and they bring artists from Cameroon. Cameroon, right? exactly. And so, so it's very important that we also invite our artists that are local to the U.S., and again, not stopping you from bringing the artists from Cameroon, but again, it is an opportunity for the artists that are here. We all know that they have to work double to be able to do this thing they are doing. I don't even know how... For me, I have to sit on my same desk that I work from at home. But for you, I wish you could work from the studio you sing music in. <laughs> so it is, it is tough. I see that. I appreciate it a lot. And I want to say thank you again a lot for saying yes to my invitation. And thank you for coming on to the You Can Be Anything podcast. Thank you so much. It'll always be a yes. Thank you awesome. so much, everybody, for, for receiving me again. I go by the name of Prince P. Please. Uh, search me on all social pl platforms, Prince P Music. Everything is Prince P Music, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, anywhere, uh, even on Facebook on, or YouTube. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Solange. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm happy you See showed you up. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> hey, hey, guys. This was amazing. I had a great time chatting with Prince P. Hey. You, are, you all know, right? This is what Soso Babes does. I love to come sit here, chat with these amazing guests, just have a good time, hear what they're doing, hear what they're up to. They share their experiences, they share their challenges and all of these things, and we just learn from them and we move on. So again, I do not see a lot of comments. So if you're still watching me, you got to pump me some hearts now. I want to see some red hearts going up. Doesn't mean that the people watching me today are not my lovers. Come on, Trailblazers, pump some hearts for social babes. I'm watching. I want to see some hearts go up. Like people just watch me quietly today. I did not get a lot of heart pumps. Somebody gonna pump me hearts, so I'm not gonna go away. Is somebody gonna pump me hearts? You don't pump me hearts, I'm gonna start calling names. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. I definitely appreciate it. It's been a great afternoon. Um, felt really beautiful talking to Prince P. And hey, this is what we do. Please kindly follow his platforms, Prince P Music, on YouTube, Facebook, and all the other social media platforms. Kindly follow him, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He has amazing songs. The one I just played now was um Unfortunately, the mid the sound was not up again. That's so so bips for you. <laughs> Probably needed to check some um sound stuff before I played that. But again, I put the link to the video to that video in the chat. So please click on it and um listen to his music, subscribe to his page. He has an amazing vocal, like the sound is beautiful. So please stay tuned. You're one and only so so babes. 
I hope to see you put tomorrow. Everything being equal on this page or on the Roy Mama's page tomorrow, we'll be running the Sunday Fun Day. And next week, I'm talking to two amazing guests. And so please, if you're not following the page yet, kindly follow. Hopefully, Facebook sends you notifications when I come live. I've got two guests um, booked for next week to talk to them, and I hope that is going to be an amazing conversation, just like the one we had now with Prince E Music. Thanks again. Thanks again for trusting and for following your girl and for making my dream come true. I appreciate you all, and I am who I am because you're there for me. Thanks again, and have an amazing weekend. Stay blessed and be good to each other. Bye-bye.